Our service begins on page 264 of the Book of Common Prayer.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing you have made and forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may obtain of you the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from Job, chapter 2, beginning with verse 1. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm on my holy mountain, that all the inhabitants of the land tremble. For the day of the Lord is coming, it is near, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness. Like blackness spread upon the mountains, a great and powerful army comes. Their light has never been from of old, nor will be again after them in ages to come. Yet even now, says the Lord, return with me with all your heart, with fasting and weeping and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love, and relents from punishing. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, Call a solemn assembly, gather the people. Sanctify the congregation, assemble the aged, gather the children, even infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep. Let them say, spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery, a byword among the nations. Why should it be said among the peoples, where is their God? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us read responsibly by head verse breaking at the Astra, Psalm 103. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. So tender and great kindness. He will not always accuse us. The Lord will keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins. Nor reward us according to our wickedness. For as the heavens are high above the earth, As far as the east is from the west, as a father cares for his children, so does the Lord care for those who fear him. For he himself knows, he remembers that we are but dust. A reading from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, um, starting at verse 20 B. We entreat you on behalf of Christ to be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time, I have listened to you. 
and on a day of salvation I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have committed ourselves in every way, through great endurance and afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God. With the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute, we are treated as impostors and yet are true as unknown, and yet are well known, as dying, and see we are alive, as punished, and yet not killed, as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing, and yet possessing everything. The Word of the Lord. Stand for the table. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to the Lord Christ. Jesus said, Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them. For then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your arms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward, but whenever you pray, Go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Well, neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Lord Christ. You may be seated. The Lord be with you. And also, let's pray. Almighty God, on this occasion, as Wednesday, we ask that you allow us to give to you, the one who has sacrificed your son for us. Amen. Amen. Well, good morning, St. Stephen's. Good morning. 
just want to say that we were blessed to have had a good time last night. So Tuesday's pancake supper includes delicious. But there's one other thing I want to bring to your attention. Somebody was having fun, and we could tell by the squeals of the children. Today we've been blessed with the beauty of sunshine and good weather. So I say it's a beautiful day for us to do what? Have a beautiful day. As I was preparing for today's message, it occurred to me that there might be some persons who may not quite comprehend what is taking place. All they know is that today is Ash Wednesday, and that they're going to get their ashes, and then they have to find something to give up for them. <coughs> well, let's see if I can give some clarity to the occasion. Ash Wednesday <coughs> marks the beginning of Lent. The ashes that will be placed on your forehead in the fashion of a cross has a very deep meaning. In other words, the cross of ashes indicates you are to make a commitment. <coughs> that commitment involves Lent, a 40 day journey that says we are broken and are in need of repair. But many people don't understand this. The action says that we are sinners and we are seeking redemption. More importantly, it tells us who are followed who our followers of Jesus Christ and that we are to carry our own crosses. Now after receiving our ashes, we can keep them on all day or we can wipe them away. But here again, we have a choice, a choice that we can make ourselves. So you might be saying, well Sandra, you've been using words like commitment and journey. We don't see where you're going with this. Well, let's look at it this way. Although Ash Wednesday is enriched with Christian symbolism, research says we don't actually find an instance of this particular day or holiday in the Bible. On the other hand, I just can't talk about Ash Wednesday and not talk about Lent. Because Ash Wednesday is the opening door of this Lent journey. As we begin our journey, then we need to prepare by packing our luggage. Remember I said we're going on a journey, so we got to do what? Care something. But we have to make sure that we bring the right stuff. Not our usually dressy suits, gelato heels, and tons of makeup. But we're packing to name a few of the necessary items that will help us to develop spiritually, as well as build a deeper and stronger relationship with God. <clears throat> Remember, we're going on this journey, and it's going to take 40 days. And 40 is a typical indicator of a te time of testing, trial, penitence, purification, and renewal. So let's start packing. First thing we're going to pack is our Bible. That will be our GPS system and give us guidance. Then let's see. Uh, we're going to toss that commitment. This will give value to our lives. And commitment is an eternal value. Don't forget to include understanding. Know why we are making this commitment. There's room in your pack for another item. It's called faith, and one more item called love. We may need a few more items which we can pick up along the way. Realize that we've almost completed our journey when we reach Monday, Thursday, and that is the last day of Lent. When we've completed our journey, we hope that we have grown a relationship with God, which is fitting and has made him happy with us and us happy in him. As we are preparing ourselves for this journey, 
I mentioned that we might pick up a few items along the way, which we may have inadvertently left out of our suitcase. Well, a few things come to mind. One, trust. We are all children of God, and we must learn to trust Him. Two, focus. We have to learn to focus on Jesus, the one we, we turn to in times of trouble, the center of our lives. Three, thankfulness. There's so many things to be grateful for because God is good. He's always good, and He's good to us. Learning. Learn to look outside of yourself. The world is not about you. It's about God. He's supposed to come first in your life. <clears throat> Learn what makes God happy. God is happy when we know when we get to know Him. He's happy when we get to interact with Him. He's happy when we surrender to Him. He's happy when we admire him. He's happy when we serve him. And he's happy when we thank and praise him. So when people say, I'm giving up such and such a thing for land, look at it this way. <clears throat> In the Bible's New Testament, while Jesus was alone and Satan was trying to tempt him to turn away from God, and to worship him instead, and Jesus refused to. This might be why people might try to get up something. They're trying to test their own self-discipline. They want to believe that they are making sacrifices to please God, but the real sacrifice is expressed when Paul says he identifies three spiritual sacrifices that bless us and the people around us. One, the sacrifices or offerings of praise. Two, doing good. And three, sharing with others. Through Jesus, he says, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise to fruit of lips that openly profess his name. With this being said, Always remember that the greatest sacrifice ever made was that of whom? Jesus. He sacrificed his life, shed his blood, that in times of worry, despair, sickness, and weakness, we could have comfort, peace, healing, and strength. Let's say his name, Jesus. 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 Jesus, Jesus, the great sacrifice. So as we prepare for this journey of Lent, a journey of reflection to celebrate Jesus' resurrection, realize that we can best celebrate through asking for forgiveness, fasting, prayer, and almsgiving. Let us live our lives to the fullest, fullest, wishing you and all around us a very happy Ash Wednesday. Amen. Amen. Let us turn to page 264. I kneel in silence. Dear people of God, the first Christians observed with great devotion the days of our Lord's passion and resurrection, and it became custom of the church to prepare for them by a season of penitence and fasting. This season of Lent provided a time in which converts to the faith were prepared for holy baptism. It was also a time when those who, because of notorious sins, 
having separated from the body of the faithful, or reconciled by penitence and forgiveness, and restored to the fellowship of the church. Thereby the whole congregation was put in mind of a message of pardon and absolution set forth in the gospel of our Savior and of the need which all Christians continually have to renew their repentance and faith. I invite you, therefore, in the name of the church, to the observance of the Holy Land, by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting, and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word, and to make a right beginning of repentance, and as a mark of our mortal nature, let us yield to the Lord, our Maker, and Redeemer. Let us prepare for the receiving of the ashes. May we all come forward and sing the song. Let us read in unison Psalm 51 together. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. 
against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. And so you are justified when you speak and upright in your judgment. Indeed, I have been wicked from my birth, a sinner from my mother's womb. For behold, you look for truth deep within me and will make me understand wisdom secretly. Purge me from my sin, and I shall be pure. Wash me, and I shall be clean indeed. Make me hear of joy and gladness, that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out from all my iniquities. Create me a clean heart of God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and not take the Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving help again, and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. I shall teach your ways to the wicked, and sinners shall return to you. Deliver me from death, O God, and my tongue shall sing of your righteousness. O God, my salvation. Open my lips, O Lord, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Had you desired it, I would have offered sacrifice, but you take no delight in burnt offerings. The sacrifice of God is a troubled spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O God, you will not despise. We will now have the litany of penitence. Kneel if you are able. May we together pray. Most holy and merciful Father, we confess to you and to one another and to the whole communion of saints in heaven and on earth that we have sinned by our own fault in thought, word, and deed, and by what we have done, and by what we have undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, and mind, and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not <coughs> forgiven others as we have been forgiven. We have been deaf to your call to serve, as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved <coughs> your Holy Spirit. <coughs> we confess to you, Lord, all our past, past unfaithfulness, pride, hypocrisy, and impatience of our lives. Our self-indulgent appetites, our ways, and our exportations of other people. Our anger at our own frustrations, our envy of those more fortunate than ourselves. Our intemperament of love, of worldly goods and comforts, our dishonesty in daily life and work. Our negligence in prayer and worship, our failure to commend the faith that is in us. Accept our repentance, Lord for the wrongs we have done, for the blindness to human need and suffering, and our endurance, indifference to injustice and cruelty. For all false judgments, for uncharitable thoughts towards our neighbors, and for our prejudice and contempt towards those who differ from us. For our waste and pollution of your creation and our lack 
of concern for those who come after us. Restore us, good Lord, and let your anger depart from us. Accomplish in us the work of your salvation. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Lord. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desires not the death of sinners, but rather that they may turn from their wickedness and live as given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people the penitent, the absolution, and remission of their sins. He pardons and absolves all those who truly repent and with sincere heart believe this holy gospel. Therefore, we beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do on this day, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God, I know I'm imperfect, but through you everything is possible. Forgive me for my sins and guide me into a closer relationship with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. 